So, good afternoon everyone. I very, just wanted to say that I'm very happy to be here. So I'll just start by introducing myself. So my, my name is Bruno. I'm a second year PhD student for the Graphic with Research Team. Graphic is such an acronym, it's Graph Inference and Knowledge. <coughs> the research team is located in Montpellier, South France. And the uh, hot topics that the team is, is working at the moment, it's like knowledge representations, mostly interregulation problems. There are some also description log problems, now also record leakage and uh, some uh, argumentation problems. I'm working now mostly on the uh, interrogation class problems, and I will now introduce the problem I'm working with at the moment, which is called ontological conjunctive query entry. I know it's a very long name for what it is. Some of you that are maybe in the semantic web uh, world have already been really known that uh, ontologic based data assets is the same. And uh, it's a very, very long name for what it is, very easy to explain. So guess you have a knowledge base. Knowledge base we consider fact of knowledge, uh, most commonly a, a relational database, and an ontology, which is universal knowledge about the individuals in the fact of knowledge, and a conjunctive query. It can be Boolean, for now it's, it doesn't matter anymore. The problem consists in is there an answer to the query the knowledge base? Resuming, can we deduce the query from the knowledge base? So uh, I'm going to give you a short, very, very short example. Alice and Bob are animals. Alice and Bobfish, Bob the parrot. And here we have an ontology with uh, universal knowledge about individuals. About the fish, the fish swim, the parrot is a bird, and the bird flies. So we have a question. Is there a clownfish? That one is very easy. I mean, everyone can do it in a bit. No, the database. Yes, Alice is a clownfish. If I give you a second question, is there an animal who flies? And if I check my factual knowledge, can I deduce it to query from no facts? Actually not. The information has to be, I have to look at the ontology and to increase uh, <coughs> my information here. So, a clown had a fish, so I can deduce that Alice had a fish. If Alice had a fish, Alice swims. Very a bird, so then Bob the bird, and Bob flies. And now, if I get the questions, is there an animal who flies? Yes. So basically, that's the research problem I'm working on. And we decided to use it using a uh, decidable subset of first order logic. So we have terms which are represent individuals, so we have Alice and Bob. We have predicates. Most people who are in the graph community know it are relationships. So we just call it predicates. Predicates have a name and an arity. So life, swings, friend, and begin. Uh, in logics, it can be an app. Have to buy her. Atoms. So Bob is a parent. We represent like this. As a of above. And we have rules. Rules are a piece, uh, an object, a piece of information that says, like, for all x, if it's a bird, then it's like. I have in every rule the hypothesis and the conclusions. And once the hypothesis is matched, then I have the conclusion. So, given the problem that I described before. According to this formalism, what we have is like our factual knowledge is now it's atoms, <coughs> conjunction of atoms. Our ontology is now a set of rules, and our conjecture is also atoms. So now we can work with uh, logical elements that we already know how to work. So just some some information about why we have to show two models like this. So if we choose an empty set of rules. We are just doing entailment as query answering on a relational database or RDF entailment. It's called. If we choose the for all rules, which is data log rules, if he has a car, then he has a driving license, not adding any information new, uh, not introducing new individuals in the query. So it's like RDF schema, data log, or contextual graphs. And if we choose for all exist rules, that are rules that adds new individuals when uh, they are <coughs> flashed. So x and a human, and so then we are in the scope of data log plus minus and uh, contextual graph script rules. So basically, this is to say that the, f the, the manner we have modeled the problem, we retrieve <coughs> semantical equivalences 
with um, many, many languages of semantic web that are all around for W3C. So that's main, one of the major reasons that we have chosen to model it like this, because according to the set of rules views, we have another, we are in a field that is already worked before. So, I said, can we deduce a query? So, if I want to deduce a query from facts, I have to find a substitution that I'll call S that associates for every term in the query a term <coughs> in the in the facts um, according to the relationship they have. So here my problem is finding substitutions. <coughs> if I do it with rules, it's a bit more difficult than that because I have first to enrich my facts with the rules, then to search a substitution from the query into the facts. So here my problem is applying rules, then find substitutions. <laughs> what we're gonna do now is to see there basically how to the elementary operations that we need and efficiency to see where it can be done. So for applying rules, I won't, I won't get much into that because it's not my part of work, but we have forward chaining, which is what we have seen in the example. We have facts, we have our ontology, and once we need, every time you need, you go check your ontology and you add new information to, the, to your to your knowledge base, to your facts. So queries are applied, do a normal freeze once <coughs> we have the facts. And if the problem with that, it can never stop. I mean, if I say that a uh, human has a parent which is human, I can come to apply rules and uh, I'll never get my query. Backward training is another process, which is that I won't move with my facts, they won't change, I will change my, I will write my, my queries. And then according to the rules, I will write simple queries and then I'll, those new <laughs> queries that I'll apply. <coughs> but these two methods is what we want to try to implement. And for that, as we see, if I want to find substitution, here's what I need. I need to give them some label or some information to retrieve it in the knowledge base. Knowledge base being any, any data structure. I want to retrieve easily the adjacent terms of, of a certain term. So here in a, in a graph, you can imagine easily it's getting compute quite fast in the neighborhood of a node. And also, as a low level operation, I have to check every time if there is really an, uh, an item with the given terms. And if I want to rows, I have to also do efficiently the first part, which is find substitutions, and then inserting new piece information from time to time. I think we discussed it in the, the beginning of the session that, yes, when I want to apply rules, I want to apply some few, few content in, in not every, all my graph at all. So, until very recently, we are talking about factual knowledge. We were still in the time that everyone, you have information, put it on a relational database, do a school on it, there are still some things that have changed the nature of a problem, which is in 97, Eddie Bull he first introduced the notion of semi-structured data. <coughs> semi-structured data, as I take in this paper, it's knowledge based with a regular partial implicit structure or a very large schema that doesn't help very much. Schema is ignored, or even you don't have English, you don't get to distinguish the difference between the data and the schema. Such, for, for instance, an, M an MP3 file, you go into the information, it's zeros and ones, and where's the schema, where's the data. So, that's all on the web. Ontologies, RDF files, semi-structural data is all around. That's the data we everyone is aiming now, and we've, we'll see what, what happens when we try to use a relational database with the kind of data. So also now, knowledge base can be very large. And for now, for our work, we are just working, we are treating large, we're not quantifying it, but something, we're gonna work on it, not in my, not my memory. So the solution, let's load everything in memory and, uh, and reason with it, we'll, we'll try to avoid it. We just want to some, start in the secondary memory with the disk, and uh, maybe the person who, who follows me in the PhD will try to do this uh, about bases that you connect in memory. So, what's already known about it, about first results, is that 
if my data are not in main memory, but they are on disk, there is no problem at all with relational database. They are made for that. However, for conjunctive queries, if I use SQL for this problem, every predicate is a table, and then I'll try joining tables with some tables, and it, as far as my <coughs> query gets larger, then I'm joining everything. And it explodes. I mean, uh, it has been shown that uh, at queries with 10 different predicates, SQL doesn't answer anymore. And I can use an homomorphic algorithm, which is basic, but uses SQL uh, atomic operations, such as insert and select. But then the complexity of these operations, is de it depends on the size of the table. And we are working with very, very large data. So if I depend on the complexity for reading the whole base for something, then we've lost. <coughs> so graph homomorphism works very well in memory. Until now, there is no test with graph databases yet. We will say that ma mainly because it's very recent. So, basically, as you may see, that's why I'm that. So, for very large databases, there are three different approaches. Let's forgive the first one, not my kind of stuff, probably. So that. Very, very opt uh, optimized algorithms for do the deduction and the rules and then using very, very proper storage methods that can assure the efficiency on the elementary operations that we have <coughs> listed before. Just check that. So my goal in my thesis is to show that we cannot work without two and three. They go together. We mean, you have to get, you need to get a good algorithm for deduction, but if your data structure is appropriate, it won't work. And if you have the inverse, you have a very, very good storage system and you ha don't have the good algorithm for querying, it won't work either. So for now, we are going to investigate the different storage models, see how they work, the data structure, and see how they perform on elementary operations. Then we'll try to write some kind of abstract architecture to see the same, the, the same generic piece of code that will be run on each one different models the same way to see which performs better and then to decide to write an algorithm for deduction. So let me introduce the Alexa platform, the first acronym I've created, and I don't think I'll, oh, I'll handle to create this one model as good as this one. The Alexa project created the platform, which stands for an abstract and logic-based architecture <coughs> for systems and knowledge-based analysis. Very long. <laughs> <laughs> The new logo is very recent for those who were in Hanover in, in March, there were no logo yet. So I thank my advisor that drawn it. Uh, what we want with it is to perform, or at least try to perform our problem, which is <coughs> also a very long name, in a logical manner, as because we have modeled this way, and try to use the information no matter which kind of uh, a system the data is stored. So basically, I have data in a graph, I can move it, I won't move it to a relation database, I do a transformation to logic, and I keep the same information. So basically, that's what we want to do with it. So it's much layered, which means that on top I will have uh, knowledge representation operations, such as homomorphism, rule application, but the architecture will handle it with a common structure until uh, uh, storing and loading on this. For that, if I want to transform things that doesn't go well together, I'll have to write, I'll, we have written classes and interfaces that generate some kind of common type of data, which simulates uh, first order logic, and then every system now has to implement those interfaces and to answer uh, in atoms, predicates, and terms. Instead of edges or tables or everything, we have to put everything in a common data type so algorithms can be generic. We've used it in Java, it's a very questionable choice, but it's been now every day, almost every base we have been working on has already written in Java or has uh, some kind of wrapper that connects in Java and it's very, very useful to connect pieces to work with, it's very easy. It's, uh, it's lost, it's not, it's not the most optimized thing, I think. Running the JVM, going up to a certain of information, it's, 
definitely not the best choice. But we're not here to do something very, very optimized, but something that we can enlarge to do any, any kind of software. So, <coughs> so at the moment, we have connected those systems. So Jaina set them as triple stores. It's not very easy to connect triple stores because uh, most of them are not open source, the best of them, at least. And uh, also that uh, I haven't seen much many triple stores in, in Java. Relational database, that looks simple. MySQL, because everyone knows it. SQLite, because it's fun, because um, it writes directly on disk. So we're working on secondary memory, so let's see if not getting so much things in memory uh, fast, uh, makes the process faster or not. <coughs> they have some GDBs, the and your project. I have tried more GDBs, but at the moment I didn't have a result satisfying enough, so I was expecting today to discuss with the Italian guys to see if there is something wrong with my code. But it's not that thing, so we're trying to work at that. If I want to add another storage system, I just write a connector, I transform it to the logics, from logic to the system, from system to the log to logics, and it works. So, my bottom, I'll show in the um, diagram on the next slide, but I'll try to perform my operations from homomorphism and, and rule application on top, and then after all, it's the system that will handle this according to the, to the system. So, as I said, I have my operations on top, I have a fact, which is the i fact in first place, which represents a fact. It shares like 95% of code with the graph interface in Tinkerbell. But the difference is that I, an i fact is uh, defined as uh, affecting logics, and a graph on the Tinkerbell stack uh, is the model of the property graph. <coughs> so that's the main difference. I have atoms, terms, which is our vertices and, and terms. And, uh, no atoms, but terms are variables. I have my connectors, and then I go on this with this. So basically, here's how we proceed to have the same thing. So now, once this is programmed, what we want to do with it now, we're going to try to run some tests in order to see how good are those systems, and can we can uh, how can we compare the system. So right now, I'll do simple things. I'll I'll take smaller uh, knowledge bases and larger knowledge bases and we'll try to store that and compare storage time on the system and then I'll do the querying tests which means I'll have a set of queries and then I'll put on each system and then I'll run my, alg my deduction algorithm and uh, we'll see time was there and uh, I can also switch algorithms to query engines so I've written a data log to SQL algorithm so for the same base Relational database will see if uh, an homomorphism algorithm is more efficient than an SQL or not. <coughs> and once this is done, we'll see. Is there a, a winner? Is, it, is there a system which is good at all levels? Or is there any system which is good for storing, but not very many good for when I want to query? Is that one which is slow for storing, but creates some indices when I, want, I try to query it? It's much more efficient. So that's. Yeah. So, for now, uh, I will detail more of the storage test, which I have finished, and then querying test is still in, in progress. So, storage algorithm C, so we have an input manager, which says, uh, who determines if my input data is a RDF, or atoms, or a text file, so my input manager. I create a new fact, so an X fact, because I have to, I fact is an <laughs> interface, so I have to choose uh, where I want to store the information, so X can be uh, any one of those. I get an iterator, I say I pass the content into atoms, which now I'm in the second layer, I mean it's my common type, and then I try to store. We might see that it's not the most appropriate thing, uh, manner to, to work when, it's, uh, when there's a lot of information, because now I'm parsing everything and then I'll say to the storage system, store everything. So, the store method is implemented by all systems, and according to the storage method is it is, it's different. For instance, if it's a graph database, so here I have 
it's not necessarily an empty graph because I can load another uh, graph which is already open. But for each atom in the iterator, I check my terms. If there is a node already with this name, I retrieve it. If not, I have to create it. C and V are just for constants and variables as between logics, but it's just a renaming for the name. And then once I'm sure that all the nodes are created, let's add an hyper edge with the name with the label with the predicate. That's, that's the algorithm. It leads <coughs> each, atom, each atom. If I have to create a new node, I do it and then I add a node. In case it's, it's a relational database, it's the same, but let's see, I get my predicate and if there's not a table with the name of a predicate, I have to create it and then for each term I rename it where is a constant term or a variable and then I add the tuple to the table. So basically, going from this and backwards, I have uh, my translation between those data types and to my and to logics. So basically the workflow of our test suits works like this. <laughs> we, have, we have chosen to work with large RDF files, very easy to find, and also significant. So input manager, he parses RDF. We, we will not parse RDF to put in a triple store, it's doing like one thing and going backwards. As triple stores, they handle RDF stores directly. So we're gonna put and we'll see if they're better that the others, then here I have my translation, and then I put, and then I try to measure the time. So for our test, I don't know if many of you have heard about the SPGV project. It was presented in 2008 at ISLIC. It was a, a, a Spark or benchmark at the, uh, the beginning. It's a very interesting Spark language, but they, the guys have studied DBLP structure. DBLP with the publication in computer science and attached domains, and they have said that for a social, on a web 2.0 point of view, it was, DBLP is a very interesting uh, knowledge base, because it has different relationships, different kind of entities, and it represents quite well a social network. So they say, let's study this, this architecture, and they have created a data generator, a random data generator, that respects those structures. So we can create bases of any size, and no matter what size you give, it will handle some kind of same structure. So we have our knowledge base in the RDF, which is parsed into artifacts, is stored. Here's the results of it. Can you guys read what I have? What's, ha what's going on? Let me put it on this side. So I go from now I'm going to from zero to one million triples, and here's the size, the, the time that it takes to to load, so 300 seconds, about 5 minutes is kind of good. And um, here it is, I'm comparing graph databases. The green thing is about the problem of the server, that actually we, on our lab, we don't have a, a very powerful computer, so Oracle, when you have to set it, set it up, you have to determine how much uh, resources you give it to Oracle, and I couldn't give the whole the whole resource of my machine to Oracle, so I, get, I gave him half, like less than one giga, less than two giga of memory, and it goes slow, very, very slow. Huh? Yes, but I mean, if I don't put it here, I will present my results and someone will say, why don't you, why don't you have to try Oracle? Because they say they are fast. So we have tried, but in our, in our case, it's inappropriate. So basically this is, so, the problem is, <coughs> once this is done, now the good is where is large. You have to try <coughs> very, very large. And when you try to use the same algorithm for large databases, it hangs. Definitely, it, it doesn't scale. Mainly, the, the main reason is the fact that I put the whole knowledge base into, uh, into, my, into logics, and then I store it. And we have issues. The first issue we have is about parsing RDF, which is Basically the same RDF is the, uh, is the same thing that when parsing XML. If your parser loads a lot of things in memory, then you're taking memory from the star system <coughs> that will try to store it and it, it won't have much memory to work. And then uh, heap space is over. 
So we try to find uh, some kind of buster that doesn't take, that reads uh, information one by one in order to to avoid memory consumption at passing level. In order to it, redu uh, it will reduce time for the storage system storing. Transactions, I mean, uh, if you try to put like 10 million traffic in one single transaction, so, uh, most storage systems will go to memory, swap memory. So you have to break it sometimes, say, do it on disk, clear memory, and try to aim, aim to continue. And garbage collecting. So we have lots of overhead limits. I don't know if anyone has read the, the documentation Java, or when does this error happen? It's when 98% of the time of your program use, is used by the garbage collector. So creating items, uh, destroying terms, destroying items, this is, for, is now forbidden. We are recycling everything. You just create some pieces of information and use the same objects all the time. You can do it otherwise. So we have a new algorithm who has switch the, the, the walk. So first we have just create <coughs> a fact and we say the input manager that says, let's store something. And then at every time we create a buffer and the buffer says, if the first is full, you, you send it to the storage system that it stores. And um, if not, we take an element of a buffer, which is already all <coughs> instantiated change predicate to the new predicate, change terms, <coughs> and keep going. And until the buffer is full, and we have, and then you can choose the buffers for size of one million, three iPods, or two million, whatever. But at least you know that your memory won't crash here. So, given this, we have the following surprise that triple stores that will be having better in the first version of the algorithm they're being totally got, uh, they went space and the graph database and racial database according to this, this new memory issue got really really fast and I say that results that we are having like below 2,000 seconds for 5, five, five million is getting to start very uh, almost impressive um, what would I say that's it. Uh, yes. What was the decision for the databases you uh, you've tested? Why didn't you use something like Virtuoso or what? Virtuoso? You know that one? Yes. Uh, okay. Virtuoso. Yes. Uh, mostly the fact that we had some, we have chosen some that were easy to access and easy to start working with, and also about licenses. We I mean. Uh, projects that we can download, that use, and that you can, I mean, we don't, <coughs> actually, we, we haven't tested it yet. Okay. Because it's open source? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, but however, in the SPGUB paper that they, they have tested, uh, it's the Sparkle benchmark, they've tested insertion on, on triple stores, and uh, both Gen and Sesame behave better than virtual, so we just take in the, the best ones on that benchmark. Actually, it's a, it's a very strong paper because it, it has shown that virtual crashes at, at the time it crashed with very, very logic. I don't know how the project is going now. <laughs> it's already fixed now. <laughs> we have the same but they, they created the patch uh, just a week ago. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> but the thing is that I, I have been, I had to, in order to make things work, to get into a uh, graph database, a racial database, and triple stores internal structure. But once the start, the beginning, and we have some results, I mean, uh, I, mean I don't want to do it again. I mean, if I, if I find any new tool, I'll just try the translation to logics, and I get, and then I can test it. So whatever. If, if someone tells me test this, I'm, I'm sure it's better. Then you write a connector, and we'll compare. I mean, it's not. Uh, uh, just a little question: Is, is it <coughs> a little bit unfair uh, because you have to uh, transform all your data to uh, rela uh, relational data, and the traffic store can already import the RDF data without transformation? Yes, but I mean. 
our results, if the triple store that doesn't have the translation works much, much better than the others, then we could say the triple store result is better, but it's because I don't, didn't have to transform. Or, in the last say, it's not the case. I mean, I don't trans when I use the, the triple store, I don't even change the data, and when I do, it's fine. So I, now I can say that some triple stores doesn't have a good memory uh, okay. memory strategy. So now it's just a, an, over, an overview of what's going next from our work. So we have the algorithm to transform method of priority to SQL. We have the basis, we have loaded the basis. Uh, that's on the left side, uh, I've shown the comparison until 25 million because it takes time to run. Uh, this last week, I've got uh, on graph databases, I can store like uh, in a not very powerful machine more than 80 million triples. Okay, and uh, it's um, and I think we're handling memory as we have done it, uh, we, we can I mean we can go until the this space reaches limit. I mean we can store up to the graph can 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 cannot be holding a single machine. So we will still have to find queries to const to build a set of query that says. This is a, a relevant set of query to test the efficiency of a, of a storage system um, to see whether it's performant or not. It's very, very difficult. But when, once it's done, uh, we're going to run to the graph database and uh, for one algorithm, we'll test all the graph, graph database together. And for our relational databases, we can do not even testing one against all, but Relational databases are very, very different one from the other, but the most interesting thing would be to take our algorithm and compare to the native SQL interface which is there, and to see in which kind of queries <coughs> does our algorithm does better than SQL and uh, otherwise. So basically, we're going to take our facts, the output, our query, we're going to do, I'll call it BT because it's a backtracking algorithm, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, and if I go back, that's why I was interested in Cypher to see if I can go anything better. So we'll change the term size and then we'll see how, how long it, it does it take. <coughs> and then after I'll transform into SQL and then I'll, I'll make the second comparison. And the same thing about graph query language. I won't call G GQL because I think there's someone who already named the language after that so it's very very bad because it doesn't fit in, the, in one, no. one single line. <laughs> <laughs> so now finding the the most interesting thing with which I'm working right now is to find really, really difficult queries. Queries that any, that we know that it's difficult because it, you're looking for a particular structure inside a big fact. And once you test this one, that you can see uh, where a system works or not. Uh, also, there's the problem with real world with generated knowledge base. For now, we're, we're using uh, generated knowledge bases. But we know that knowledge bases that are in the world, like DVP, all that, they have a particular structure and most, most of the time the structure is driven by the fact that the application that people want to use it. And for some kind of application, for instance, um, BioPortal <coughs> was uh, ontologies from the M <coughs> NCI, I think, from Health, in the, so they used ontology, but they put all in a relational database. And so I'm pretty sure that querying really as a relational model would be much easier than that. And then also constraints of the problem will be to come out next year. So that's it. Thank you very much. So we have time for, for one fast uh, question. Uh, I know your, your work uh, focuses on storing and the query part is, is coming now. Um, I didn't quite get the, the, this last part when you made this, this uh, abstract uh, query engine and then the specific SQL and the specific graph. Uh, so you mean you will test uh, and the back end separately? Or? Yes, but uh, I'll have queries. And then, for instance, for every graph database, I have an algorithm, which is graph homomorphic, which is generic and then I'll, I'll run the query with it on every graph database 
but most graph database we've seen here, they have integrated some query engine or query language, and then I want to see if my algorithm that I'll write is, off, is that performance better or worse than the integrated native algorithm. For instance, uh, traversal queries that they are shown, for instance, uh, cipher for thing, I have to check. And also, I can, for the same algorithm, I will be able to compare if there is one base that behaves better than the other one. So that's why the work is a bit split. You know? I mean, I will, I'll test the basis, the, the storage system, but at the same time, the test will serve to, to, to compare my algorithm with existing query engines. Thank you.